Welcome. Today we are going to talk about Apple ID and iTunes. We are going to look at what an Apple ID is used for and how to manage your purchases using iTunes. So what is an Apple ID? An Apple ID is a single account, a unique identity that you use to manage all your transactions with Apple. So whether it's purchasing songs, movies, or taking advantage of services such as iCloud, or even communication, we use an Apple ID for all these things. A question that people often ask, if I have to purchase songs and movies, I need an Apple ID, then is it free to create? The answer is yes. An Apple ID is free. There is no restriction in terms of billing or payment that is imposed on you, the user, while creating one. So how do I create an Apple ID? There are various ways of creating an Apple ID. You could visit iCloud.com or the website AppleID.Apple.com and go ahead and create a new ID out there if you want. In fact, various applications that use Apple ID such as iTunes or the App Store do prompt you to sign in with an Apple ID and in case you don't have one, they typically have a link that redirects you to a site where you can go ahead and create one. You can create as many Apple IDs as you want, but remember, an Apple ID is a unique identity that you have with Apple. So if you do have multiple Apple IDs, it will get a little difficult to manage your information across your different Apple IDs. Do note, it is not possible to merge multiple Apple IDs. So if you've purchased a few songs from one Apple ID, a couple of movies from another Apple ID and you would like to consolidate in one location, that would not be possible. So make sure you create only one Apple ID and drive all your transactions and use through that itself. So what is an iCloud ID? I'm asked to sign with my iCloud ID many times. Well, an iCloud ID is exactly like an Apple ID. In fact, the login credentials for both are the same. The username and password for an Apple ID is the same that you use for your iCloud ID. If you change your Apple ID password, then your iCloud ID password will also change to the new one that you set for the Apple ID. Basically, an iCloud ID is an Apple ID which is used for iCloud services also. The term iCloud ID is often used interchangeably with Apple ID and they usually mean the same thing itself. So what can I use my Apple ID for? Well, you can use it to buy a lot of things. You can use it to buy songs, movies from the iTunes store, apps for OS X, iOS, watchOS or tvOS. And in certain places, you can even use your Apple ID to purchase products such as the MacBook Pro or iPads or iPhones. Of course, do remember that when you're purchasing something, you need to make sure you save your credit card details with your Apple ID itself. This leads to an important point. All purchases, whether they're songs or movies or apps, are linked to your Apple ID. As far as Apple is concerned, the owner of those media or those assets is the owner of the Apple ID itself. This is very important. When you buy a song, it is for your personal use only. We are going to see later on how it's possible to share your content with other users. But otherwise, do remember that whatever you buy is linked to your Apple ID itself. It doesn't just end there. Another very important point to keep in mind is that all purchases are region specific. Many elements that are available on the App Store are tailored to suit your region. This could be due to legal reasons or licensing reasons, or even because the distributor or creator of the content wishes to restrict it to a particular region. So it's possible that certain books will be available, say in the United States, but not in India. It's also possible that certain apps would be available, say in India, but not in the United Kingdom. Do note what you see in the store is specific to your region only and it's tied to your Apple ID. 
if you do happen to move your Apple ID from one region to another, say you're relocating from one country to another, you may lose a lot of content that you had purchased when your Apple ID was tied to a specific country. When you come down to a new country, you may have to purchase your apps, songs and movies all over again. Beyond that, there is no restriction on the number of devices that you can sign your Apple ID with. You can have your Apple ID signed onto your iPad, your iPhone, your Mac, your Apple TV, your iPod. There's no restriction at all. As far as using content from iTunes is concerned, you can authorize up to five devices for iTunes content. This could be a combination of iPhones, iPads, iPods and different Mac computers. This leads us to iTunes. iTunes is an application that you use to manage your digital media, specifically songs and movies. When you wish to purchase songs and movies using your Apple ID, you launch the iTunes application, sign in with your Apple ID, and then browse for the songs and movies that you wish and purchase them iTunes is also the application that you use to sync your mobile devices such as your iPod, your iPhone or your iPad with digital media that you've purchased from the iTunes store. iTunes has the additional facility of even giving you the option of backing up your mobile devices onto the Mac itself. Now, let us have a look at how we can use iTunes to perform the various tasks such as browsing for songs, purchasing them and syncing them with your iPhone. Okay, so let us have a look at how we can use iTunes for various transactions. The iTunes icon typically is found in the dock below. What I'm showing you is typically for a Mac, but the same steps would also apply if you're doing this on Windows itself. So let's go ahead and start iTunes. If you're starting iTunes for the first time, you will get a pop-up showing you, giving you a quick tour of what the different icons indicate and where you can go for different things. We'll be going through this ourselves right now. So you can quickly slide through the small presentation and see what all is out there. Let's close this. You now have reached the iTunes screen. Typically there's a welcome message asking you to agree with the terms and conditions. Uh, click on agree to go ahead. Let me go into full screen mode. All right, there's nothing much here right now because we're starting with a clean slate. A few points of note. On the right hand side corner out here, you have the option to sign in, which is where you can sign in with your Apple ID. Note there is also a button to create a new Apple ID if you don't have one. So let us sign in with an Apple ID. We are signing in to the iTunes store with our Apple ID itself. This Apple ID has not been used with the iTunes store. Please review your account information. This is a brand new Apple ID that I've created and I've not used it with the iTunes store yet. So let us go and review the account information. On the tabs option above, you've gone to iTunes store. Let's click continue. I agree to the terms and conditions, say click on agree. And this is where I can give information about my Apple ID. Specifically, any redemption codes or gift certificates I can have, I can put here. I can specify the payment type or none if I don't want any payment transactions right now. Do note at a later point in time, if you do wish to purchase songs, you may have to provide information at a later point in time. 
I give the billing address details for now I'll leave it empty the country has been automatically selected as India let's click continue okay it's asking me for some details so I'll just say So I'm providing bare basic information. You did not complete the entire time. Okay. I don't know if the Indian oh Indian states are there. Okay, Maharashtra. Your Apple ID is now ready to use with the iTunes Store. You can now shop for your favorite music, films, and more. So click on Start Shopping. Notice automatically you can see your details coming up out here. This is the iTunes store. This is where you will go and purchase songs, movies that you wish. Again, note the content that is made available out here is specific and tailored to your country. You have different categories available. So you have some of the newest songs that have come out songs that are popular you can purchase an entire album if you wish or if you want you can purchase an individual song you have different categories depending on language also available there are international songs too these are some of the popular international songs and there are different categories available you can go on depending on region and genre artists or even based on movies if you wish you could even search so for example I can search based on an artist so these are songs by the artist Adele these are some music videos too. There are even suggestions for iPhone apps and iPad apps. You can buy those from iTunes also. Though it is more common and popular for people to purchase apps from the App Store itself. You can do it from the iTunes Store. Apple Watch apps. There are podcasts which match the search Adele. Information such as time, popularity and price is given. If you want you can pick up a particular song let's look at an album 25 you can purchase the entire album if you wish or you can purchase the song you can even see there are other options such as gift it, share it on Facebook or Twitter. You could even get a quick preview. Before the world fell at our feet, there's such a difference. You can get a quick preview and you can use the browser navigation buttons to go back just as you would in a browser. Now let's look at things on the left hand side. We have an option called music. On the right we have movies so let's click on movies and this redirects the iTunes store to movies itself. Now we can see some of the movies available, new releases for example here we have in the heart of the sea which has just been made available on the app store you can buy a movie if you want or rent it you can do it in different formats such as high definition or standard definition format view trailers get a lot of information and even suggestions so viewers who saw this movie 
ended up buying these two particular movies. So use the browser button to go back. And again, just like in songs, you have movies tailored to suit your country and region. You have different categories available, different genres, languages. You can browse through. An important thing to note is that when you do purchase something, whether it's a song or a movie, it is yours for life, subject to terms and condition being changed from Apple. But you only have to buy it once. You don't have to buy it again and again because it's automatically linked and associated with your Apple ID. Similarly, you can even look for TV shows. That you have you could look for podcasts from the iTunes store for example Apple special events and the WWDC keynote product releases they all come up here you have podcasts on a wide variety of categories such as photography eating news a lot of information available one of the other sections is iTunes U, which is iTunes University. This is where colleges, universities and educators put up their content on the store and make it available for others. For example, if you wish to learn about art and architecture, we can go into that category and see what courses are available out here. There is a course from Yale on Roman architecture. Let's see what they're offering. And they're offering a lot of things. You can subscribe to it. You can download lectures. There are notes that are there. This icon indicates that it's a video lecture. You can get all that information out here. So a great place to get learning and educational material. I would highly recommend that you go through this. You might find something pretty useful. So National Theatre. For those of you who are familiar with OpenCourseWare, MIT has a lot of content made available out here. Stanford has content too, which they make available out here. Harvard and Oxford, Yale, so quite a few big universities have many of their courses being made available out here. Some of the other categories are audiobooks, apps, we've already seen that, tones, which are your ringtones, and even internet radio itself, where you have different categories playing different types of songs for you. So if I go to classical, and let's say I want to listen to Beethoven. Just to give you an idea, the song is playing and we have information out here on the playlist including details about the song. I can hit pause and just stop the playing for now. So there are different categories you can go and explore through. Let's just head back to music. All this while we were looking for at the iTunes store tab. Whatever you purchase from here comes up under My Music. You can even create your own playlists. You can check out the radio, which is Apple Music. It's Apple's music radio service. Similarly, under Movies, any movies that you've purchased will come up under My Movies itself. Let us look at how we can move data onto our iPhone. If you've purchased any songs or movies, you should see them in your My Music section under Music within your iTunes application. 
right now we have not purchased any songs but let's suppose for the moment you have a cd you had purchased some time back containing your favorite music and you would like to listen to that on your iphone or your ipod or you shot a home movie on a camera and you would like to put that on your iphone and view it how would you go about doing that well first we need to import all that media into itunes itself to do that we go to file add to library we navigate to the folder that contains all the media that we want i will select these four files and click open you can see under music i have got two songs coming in with the time since this is music i've created i can edit information related to it by control clicking or tapping with two fingers and getting the secondary menu clicking on get info it's just warning you that you are modifying information for multiple items just click on edit items I'll specify the artist as me since i have created these songs i will just call the album tunes i am the composer too so i'll just copy paste my name here you don't have to do this but it's nice instrumental here is 2016 and there you go i have provided some information out there if i go on to movies i don't immediately see uh, what i want to see so i click on home videos and there you go that's the video i made let's get info on this too the director was me genre is I'll just put a new genre. Here it is 2016. I'll give it a full five star rating. I have got options out here size, complexity. Let's see, okay. So I can see this as a video list too. The other item we included was a ringtone. So here's the tunes. Again, just like the others, I can provide information. Artist is Arun Patwardhan, composer is Arun Patwardhan. Well, I am the one who did it. Instrumental 2016. I'll give it a full five star rating. It's not part of any album. So if you have additional content like audiobooks that you want, you can put them up here. That's our list. Now let's look at putting information onto the device itself. For that, you need to take your device, whether it's an iPod, iPad, or an iPhone, doesn't matter, and connect it to your computer using the data cable provider. You should see your device popping up here. So I'll click on the device. This is the first time I'm connecting my device. It's a new device to my Mac. So I click on continue. And there you go. It's prompting me to sync my iPhone with iTunes. Get started. A pretty big screen coming up. Let's go through the different options. First, on the left hand side, under this iPhone icon, are details about my phone. I can change the name here, so I'll call the student's iPhone. I can change the name. I can see the battery percentage and capacity. And then there are different sections giving me information about what is there on my phone or the phone itself. So if I go on the summary section, I get a quick summary of my phone, including the capacity, phone number it was last associated with, its version. I can update my phone from here itself. I can even back up my phone. I can choose where I want it backed up. So I can say back it up to this computer. If you choose to back it up on iCloud, it's going to consume your iCloud space. 
if you are on a 5 GB program for iCloud, we'll be seeing iCloud later on by the way. If you're on the 5 GB program, then you might run out of space very, very quickly. Backing it up on the computer is far more preferable because you have access to a larger storage capacity. Optionally, you can even choose to encrypt your phone backup by providing a password. I am going to provide a very trivial password, 1234. You should select a much stronger password when you're backing up. So I'll say set password. It's now started backing up my phone. The big advantage of backing up your phone is you can easily restore your phone from a previous backup in case there is a loss of data or you're moving on to a new device. So you can do it from here with restore backup. Information about when your backup was taken is shown down here. In the options below, there are quite a few things automatically sync when this iPhone is connected. So every time you connect your phone with a data cable, it automatically starts syncing your phone. Again, this applies to your phone, your iPod, whether it's an iPod shuffle or touch or a nano or an iPad, doesn't matter. For mobile devices such as iPhones and iPads, you even have the option of syncing wirelessly. So if you want to sync something, you don't have to necessarily connect your data cable. It will wirelessly sync everything that you have. This, these two options are pretty useful so that whenever you come into the house, it automatically starts syncing and backing up your phone. Right at the bottom, you have a memory strip showing you the usage on your phone. Right now, it's telling me 26 GB is free. It's saying other data has taken 1.43 GB and documents and data have taken 20.6 MB. If I have purchased apps from the App Store through the iTunes Store, they come up here and then I can manage which apps go on to the iPhone. As a thumb rule to avoid confusion, what I recommend to users is that you manage the installation or uninstallation of your apps from the App Store app within your iPhone. Music, this is the important part. From here, I can choose to sync songs. It's telling me that I'm putting two songs. I can choose the entire music library or selected playlists wherein I can select specific artists or genres and only take those songs from the library that I wish. In this case, I want all the music, to, all the songs to go through. Movies, again, I want to sync movies. I can choose to automatically include all movies or if I want, I can specify which movie is out there. If I have TV shows, I can select those two. So let's select tones. Again, I can select all tones or just specific tones if I want. Earlier, it was possible to sync photos from your Mac onto your mobile device. Now this is handled by iCloud. Before we proceed further, let me clarify one thing about iTunes. It is typically used to transfer data from your computer onto your device. Under certain situations, it is possible to move some kind of data from your device back onto the computer. In most cases, it is a one-way traffic. You move data from your computer onto your mobile device, not the other way around. If you want data to transfer back and forth from your device to the computer and computer to the device, it is much better to use iCloud. We will be talking about iCloud in a later video. Just like photos, calendars and contacts are also synced through iCloud and not from your phone. Let's go back to summary. As you can see, the minute I added music and movies, it showed that 50 MB is taken by video, 
and 4.6 MB is taken by audio and there are three songs in there. Once I'm done and I'm satisfied, I can go ahead and click apply. Clicking apply will sync my iPhone with the content that I've chosen from my computer itself, including changes to the options such as sync this uh, iPhone over Wi-Fi, change the name of the phone. As you can see, it's copying some songs. Once I finish syncing, I can look at what is on my device from within iTunes it's under the on my device section. So I go to music, I can see the songs are in there, movies, I can see my movies come up, tones, I can see the tone has come up. And that's how you sync the data from your computer onto an iPhone. A few points to note regarding iTunes. Make sure that you sync your device, that is your iPod, iPhone, iPad, with a single computer. Why is this important? If we look back at the video earlier, we saw that iTunes is used to transfer data from your computer onto your device. Let's say you've got a computer A, a desktop at home, from where you sync all your songs and movies onto your device. And tomorrow you decide to take your device and sync it with your laptop that you use for work. It will result in loss of data. This is because iTunes will then try to sync the data which is there present on your laptop and you replace it with the data that is currently there on your device. If you are syncing your iPhone and iPad, make sure you do it with a single device only. To summarize, what is an Apple ID? An Apple ID is a unique ID that you use to identify yourself with Apple during various transactions such as purchasing or using iTunes. An Apple ID can be used on any Apple device or with iTunes on Windows for example. Just to repeat again, iTunes is used to transfer data from your computer to your mobile device, not necessarily the other way around. Also, to keep things simple, to make sure it's easy to use your Apple devices, maintain a single Apple ID through which all your purchases and transactions are made and sync your mobile device, that is your iPad, iPhone or iPod, iPod Touch, whichever it is, with a single computer using the same Apple ID. As long as you follow this rule, you should not have any problems with moving data from your computer to your mobile devices or managing your purchases and transactions. In the next video, we will look at how Apple ID works with iCloud and how iCloud simplifies the transfer of data between your computers. Thank you.